Hi, so in this series of videos we're going to be looking at the Edexcel Foundation paper and it's um, the 2018 series. Um, what I'm going to try to do is to break the video down, the whole paper down into videos of about 20 to 30 minutes or so in length. Uh, please do stop the video, um, have a go at each of the questions and then compare your solutions. Okay, so we're going to work through then the first question which is asking you to write 6,324 correct to the nearest thousand. So we're looking at the thousands column, which is this one here, which is number six in it. So correct to the nearest thousand is going to be 6,000. Okay, on to question number two, and it asks you to write the following numbers in order of size. Okay, well start with the smallest. So what we're looking at is taking each of these numbers and having uh, thinking about how they would work on a number line. So the smallest number here is actually minus 6 and then it's going to be minus 5, 0, 6 and 12. Okay, if you're not sure about that do have a look at a number line and that will give you some idea about how these numbers are going to work. Okay, um, on to part B of the question. It says write the following numbers in order of size, starting with the smallest number. Okay, um, at first glance these can be a little bit confusing. So one of the ways that you can perhaps uh, try to uh, visualise it is that at the moment we've got three decimal places after the zero. But there's only two there and two there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a zero in here in each of those and that means now with all of the numbers we've got three decimal places. Okay and then really it's a case of almost ignoring the zero point. So this zero point bit just ignore that because it means then the smallest number would be 78. Okay the next biggest number would be 708. The next biggest number would be 780 and then finally 870. OK, so you can write those out as 0 0.078, that would be the first one, 0 0.708, then it would be 0 0.78, and then finally it would be 0 0.87. OK, so uh, it's entirely up to you, you might want to just actually rewrite those numbers yourself, but that would be the method I would use, is just to make sure that you've got the same number of decimal places. Okay, on to um, question number three, and it says write 20% as a fraction. Well, percent means out of 100. So rather than writing 20%, I'm going to write it as 20 out of 100. And then really it's just a matter of reducing this down to a simple fraction. And actually, from the purposes of this particular question paper, 20 out of 100 is absolutely fine because it doesn't ask you to simplify it. If it did, what I would do is if I divide through by 10, that means then that would become 2 over 10. And then I could divide through by 2 again, and that would become 1 over 5. So actually, the simplified form of this is going to be 1 fifth. Okay, hope that's okay for you. Let's move on then to question number four. And again, it's actually working with fractions. Okay, so it says here is a list of four fractions and it'd like you to um, circle or write out the fraction which is not equivalent to a quarter. So what we mean with each of these is that if they are equivalent to one quarter, if I multiply this by four and multiply the top, by 4, then in this particular case I get 4 over 16. And I can use that technique to be able to try to figure out which one is not equivalent. So my next one is 2 over 8. Well, I've got, does that equal a quarter? If I multiply this by 2, I get 8. If I multiply that by 2, I get 2, which is great. So therefore, the first two are equivalent to a quarter. OK, let's look at the next one. And this is maybe a little bit tricky. But basically, if I multiply that 4 by 15, I get 60. And if I multiply 1 by 15, I get 15. So actually, 15 over 60 is exactly the same as a quarter. So it's going to leave the last one, which is 3 over 9. So if I say 
is one o quarter. Well, there's no number that I can multiply four by to get to nine, and I can multiply one by to get to three that would be the same number. Okay, so actually it's going to be this one that is not equivalent to one quarter. Okay, so the answer to the question would be um, three over nine. Okay, now on to question number five. And it says, write down the first even multiple of seven. So let's just write down the multiples of seven, uh, just for a little bit. I'm gonna say seven, 14, 21, uh, 28 and so on. Well actually the first even multiple is going to be this even number which is the number 14. Okay so hopefully fairly straightforward with that one. Let's look then at question number six and I've got simplify three times four t. Well it's just the same as saying four, uh, three lots of four t. Okay, so three lots of 4t is going to be 12 lots of t or 12t. Okay, just be very careful with these. What they are not looking for is for you to write 12 times t. Okay, that really wouldn't be correct. Okay, because what we're doing there is we're introducing a multiplication sign into it. Um, it would depend very much on the mark scheme, but um, I think on those... It's only one mark, so they might not give you the benefit of the doubt. They might just expect you to write 12t. Okay, let's have a look then at part B of the question. It says, simplify 8a minus 3a plus 2a. Okay, we'll just think about that as just numbers. So 8 minus 3 is 5, and 5 plus 2 is 7. So the answer is going to be 7a. Okay, we're about um, seven or eight minutes into the video, so let's have a look then at just carrying on a little bit further. And please, as I mentioned before, please do stop the video, have a go at each of these questions, and then compare your solutions. Okay, so if we move on then to question number seven, uh, we've got a probability scale. And it's, uh, it shows the probability of each of these events, A, B, C, and D. Write down the letter of the event that is certain. Well, in probability, what we basically mean is that one is a certainty. It's this one at the far end of the scale here. So the letter of the event that is certain is going to be letter D. Okay. And then it says uh, in part B, write down the letter of the event that is unlikely. Now, this is slightly different to completely impossible, okay, it's unlikely. So it's not zero, it's not this is the impossible end of the scale, okay, um, it's actually unlikely, so the answer to this one would be B, okay. Right, so let's move on then to an actual question, and it says there are 12 counters in a bag, three of the counters are red. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this into my own kind of language, really, just to make sure that I can see what's going on with it. So what I'm actually going to say is that if I know that there are three red counters in the bag, that's great. So I'm going to put R equals three. OK, three red counters, R equals three. OK, so let's have a look then at one of the counters is blue. So basically I can say B equals one. Two of the counters are yellow, so yellow equals two. And then the rest of the counters are green. Okay, so I know there's 12 of them all together, and I know that I've got three red, one blue, and two yellow. So there's six that have been accounted for. Well, if there's six that have been accounted for, it means that the green counters must also be six, because six add six is 12, and there's 12 counters in the bag. Okay. Then Caitlin takes at random a counter from the bag and show that the probability that this counter is yellow, okay, that one, or green, okay, that one is two thirds. All right, well, let's just think about that for a moment. So the probability of picking up, um, I'm gonna write this as the probability of, you have to excuse my writing, of yellow or green. Okay, well, let's look at the yellows. The yellows, there's two out of 12. Okay, 
the greens we've worked out the six so it's actually going to be two plus six out of 12 okay which is eight out of 12 so in other words what we're saying is is that eight out of the 12 counters that are in the bag are either yellow or green okay now um, we're being asked to show that the probability of the counter is is yellow or green is actually two thirds so hopefully you can see that eight over 12 is exactly the same as writing two thirds okay so if you reduce this fraction divide through by four that will give you two and divide the bottom number by four that would give you three okay and that would give you three marks on that particular question okay let's move on to um, a very popular type of question that comes up a lot with uh, these sorts of exams where it's three kilogram of meat cost 54 pounds okay well i'm going to stop there because without reading the rest of the question i would imagine that i need to find out what one kilogram of the meat costs okay um, so without reading the rest of the question i know it's, it's good practice but sometimes it's really good to just stop have a look at the the statements have a look at the sentences and say what can i do with that bit of information or what i could do with that information is i can say well if 54 pounds is the cost of three kilograms one kilogram is going to be 54 divided by three okay and i'm going to do that as a short division okay so three into five is one i've got two left over three into 24 is going to be uh eight okay eight threes are 24 aren't they okay so one kilogram of the meat is actually going to cost 18 pounds okay that's one kilogram now nina goes in and she buys two kilograms of the meat okay so if she wants two kilograms it's going to be 18 multiplied by two so two times eight is 16 one to carry two ones are two plus one is three so actually nina is going to pay 36 pounds OK, I hope that's all right for you and you've been able to follow through on that type of reasoning. Let's move on then to question number nine. OK, the center of the circle is marked with a cross. OK, that's fine. Write down the mathematical name of the straight line shown in the circle. OK, well, some of these names are quite important. Um, so it's worthwhile kind of knowing these things. They do crop up occasionally on these these exams. So the line that goes from the center of a circle to the outside edge, which is called the circumference, is called the radius. So it's the radius, okay, of the circle. Okay, and then the one underneath is write down the mathematical name of the straight line that is touching the circle. Okay, it's one of those one mark questions. You kind of either know it or you don't. Okay, I'm going to call it the tangent. Okay. And you'll come across that from time to time with these sorts of exams. OK, so let's have a look then at question number 10. OK, so we're moving at a fairly good pace through the paper. But please do, as I say, stop the video, have a go at each of these questions and decide for yourself whether these are you're OK and you can match the marking scheme and how I've worked out things. You don't need to follow my methods necessarily, but it is worthwhile just having a look at the final answers. OK, so Tim and three friends go on holiday together for a week. The four friends share the cost of the holiday equally. And this is important. OK, so each friend is going to pay a quarter of the cost of the holiday. OK. Here are the costs. So we've got 1,280 for four return plane tickets. That's all right, no problem. 640 for a villa, to, villa 220 for the hire of a car. Okay, work out how much Tim has to pay for his share of the cost. So basically we need to add up the whole amount of the holiday and then divide it by four. So if I uh, write this here, I'm gonna write 1,280 
6.40 and 2.20. Okay, and again, you might do something different. You might choose to add the first two numbers and then add the second number, uh, the final number to the other two, and that's perfectly fine, so no problems at all. Okay, but I would do it as one long column like this, and I'm gonna say all the zeros are zero. That would be 14, one to carry, and then I'm going to add six, 10, 11, Okay, one to carry, so the whole holiday is going to cost £2,140. But remember that each of the friends are sharing the cost of the holiday equally. So in other words, they're paying a quarter each because there's four of them. So I need to take my £2,140 and share it four times. Okay, so I'm going to write that as again, another short division. Okay, so I should be able to now work that through. And again, you might have a slightly different method from me, but this is the way I would work it. I would say how many fours are there in two? There's none. So how many fours are there in 21, which is the first two numbers? So there's five fours of 20, and then I've got one left over. How many fours are there in 14? Well, there's three of them. Okay, and then there's two left over, so I'm going to pass that two, carry the two on to the zero at the end there. How many fours are there in 20? Well, there's five of them. Okay, so, oop, that's not a very good five. Okay, so Tim is going to pay £535, as is each of his friends as well. Okay, hope that's all right for you. Let's have a look then at... I think uh, question number 11, okay? And we're about 16 minutes into the video, so I'm gonna to aim to try to keep this, if I can, to, as I say, around about 30 minutes or so, okay? And we'll see how we get on. 25 to 30 minutes. Okay, question number 11, all right. So write down an example to show that each of the following two statements is not correct, all right, not correct. So the factors of an even number are always even. Okay, well, factor basically is a number that will divide into another number, okay? So if we look at the number six, there's two factors of six, one of which is two, because that will divide into six, and one of which is three. Okay, three will also divide into six, but it's the statement therefore is not correct because actually this is an odd number, okay? Let's look at part B then. It says all the digits in odd numbers are odd. Okay. All right. Well, here's an odd number. Uh, let's look at 27. Okay. Uh, well, both of the digits are, well, one's two, one's seven, but actually two is an even number. Okay. So hopefully that will show that uh, those particular statements are incorrect. All right, let's move on then to question number 12. And what I think I'll do is I'll make this the last question of this particular video because it does go on for a little bit of time and we need to just be very careful about taking information from the graph. Okay, so a shop sells desktop uh, laptop and tablets. The composite bar chart shows information about sales over the last three years. Write down the number of desktop computers sold in 2015. Okay, so we're interested basically in this column because this column will tell us what's happening in 2015. Okay, so if we look across on the key at the right hand side, we'll see that the black uh, portion of the column is actually the bit that relates to desktop computers. So if we look at this, it's actually this part of it here that will go to 100. So the number of desktop computers sold in 2015 is 100. Okay, now this is going to be slightly tricky and hopefully I'll be able to get this on the video for you okay. So it says work out the total number of laptops sold in the three years. All right, so we're going to have to look at each of the columns to try to kind of figure out what we need to work out. So I'm going to look firstly at 2015. Okay, that's my starting point. And laptops are the shaded area of the bar. Okay, so the top 
part of this bus, this bit I'm interested in, the top part is 260 and the bottom part there is 100. Okay, so to work out the number of laptops, I simply take 100 away from 260. So in 2015, I've got 260 minus 100, which means there were 160 sold in 2016. Uh, 2015. Okay, let's have a look then at 2016 and we're going to do the same exercise. Okay, so in 2016, if I look at the top, I've got this point here, which is 340. And then I've got this point here, which is 120. So I take 120 away from 340. So I've got 340 minus 120, okay? If I take one away from the other, I'm gonna get 220 laptops sold in 2016. Okay, let's have a look finally then at 2017, which is the tallest column um, on my particular composite bar chart. So 2017. Okay, in 2017, hopefully you can see right at the top of the screen there, I've got a really good year, 440 laptops there. Okay, and here is going to be 160. Okay, so to work out the number of laptops in 2017, I need to take 440, uh, 160 away from 440. Okay, so let's do that. I've got 440 minus um, 160. Okay, and again, you might have a slightly different method of doing this, but I would say zero takeaway zero, I can do, no problem. I can't do four takeaway six, so I'm going to borrow from this column. Okay, so it now becomes 14 takeaway six, which is eight okay and then three takeaway one which is two so there's 280 laptops sold in 2017. okay so to find the total number of laptops sold over three years i just need to basically add these three figures together okay so i've got 280 plus 220 plus 160 and again you might slightly do it differently i would work that out as 660 and that would be my final answer 660 laptops over the three year period okay so then it says state the item that has the great that had had that had the greatest increase in sales over the three years give a reason okay well if we go back to our chart okay hopefully you can see that it's actually the gray tablets that have had the greatest increase in sales because we've gone from a relatively small amount of tablets to a slightly bigger one to a slightly bigger one okay quite a lot bigger okay whereas we look at the hatch which is the uh, laptops the sizes are, you know, they are increasing, but they're roughly the same. OK, same with the black ones, which are the desktop computers. They're actually still increasing, but are roughly the same. It's actually the tablets that have grown significantly the greatest increase. And that's the advantage of seeing this sort of information on bar charts. OK, so I would put something like uh, the tablets. OK. And the reason is, is that uh, uh, the grey columns are taller each year. Okay, so there is a final uh, part to this question, which is part D, which is actually on the next page, which is page number nine on the exam. Okay, so let's have a quick look at that. And it says that Alex says in 2017, more tablets were sold than desktops. Well, that's true. OK, this means that the shop makes more profit from the sale of tablets than from the sale of desktops, desktop computers. You must justify the answer. Well, actually, um, Alex isn't correct, OK, because although the volume of products we, we know from the information, we don't actually know how much profit is being made on an individual item. So there could be more profit on tablets 
than there is on computers, or more likely it's the other way around, that there's more profit in computers than there is in tablets. So we just simply don't know. So I'm afraid, sorry Alex, but you are incorrect, okay? <laughs> and the reason you're incorrect, incorrect is because we don't know the profit. Okay of each item. I'm sorry about my terrible writing. Okay, but hopefully you'll be able to write down something very, very similar to this. I think just in the interest of um, finishing this particular page, I think we'll do item number or question number 13. Okay, and then we will actually finish the video. It's going to take us a few minutes or so just to work through that. Okay, so we'll just finish off with number 13. So a piece of wire is 240 centimeters long. Peter cuts two 45 centimeter lengths off the wire. So be very careful about these sorts of questions, okay? So he cuts two 45 centimeters off the wire, so he basically cuts 90 centimeters, okay? They do tend to sort of slip these sort of things in, you have gotta be quite careful. He then cuts the rest of the wire into as many 40 centimeter lengths as possible, okay? Work out how many he can actually cut. All right, well, let's see how much he's got left. So he has 240 centimeters and he cuts off 90, okay? So what he's got left is gonna be 150 centimeters worth of wire. And then really what we're being asked is how many lengths of 40 centimeters can you cut out of 150? Well, there's a couple of ways of doing that. Um, I could do it as some sort of long division, okay? I think it's quite hard to do that because you've got these zeros and it just makes life a bit easier, a bit more difficult. For me personally, I would write it as a fraction because if I write it as a fraction, I can then just work out a number or the equivalent fraction, which is just a little bit easier. So if I divide top and bottom by 10, it means I can knock off the zero at the top and the zero at the bottom, okay? And then really the question is, how many lots of four are there in 15? Well, you'll know that four times four is 16, so actually it's going to be three lots of fours, okay? And then I've got a remainder of three out of four, okay? Three quarters left, okay? So it's not quite another length. There's only three quarters of a length, okay? So the answer to the question will be that uh, Peter can actually cut three pieces of wire, okay? All right, I hope that's okay for you. We're gonna finish there, it's 27, 28 minutes into the video. Okay, so that's a good time to be stopping. So we'll stop at this particular point and then I'll post uh, part two, which is going to be starting from question number 14. I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video. Music